serious, what's your unexplained experience? I lived in Mexico for a time. My roommate and I would bolt lock our front door and then, many times at night, we would hear it unlock and run downstairs to find the door completely open. We tried changing the lock, using separate add-on locks etc. Happened so much we just moved. We couldn't tell if we had a crappy neighbor or our door was possessed. We aren't superstitious, but it was still freaky. That was a dangerous neighborhood. We're in Mexico, if you don't mind answering. I had a dream that my car got a flat tire and I didn't have a spare. The next day I checked my spare and it was useless so I replaced it. The very next day after it was replaced I had a flat and needed it. Why would anyone ever dream about a spare tire? I would have dreams that my car caught on fire. I eventually sold it to a friend of my brother's. Sure enough, the car caught on fire 4 months after he had it. When I was a kid, my family was visiting some friends who owned a lake house. It was early winter, and the lake had just frozen on the edges. My sisters and I decided to go outside and play kickball with the granddaughter of the people who owned the house. The adults reminded us that the ice on the lake was really thin, so we were not to go out on the ice. Well, after playing kickball for a while, one of us kicked the ball too hard and it went out on the ice. We didn't want to get in trouble for losing the ball, so I volunteered to go and get it. I walked down to the lake and put one foot on the ice. It started popping, but I figured I could get to the ball before it broke. Just as I was about to step off the shore, I saw a man in a red flannel shirt and jeans walking a black dog on the ice. He walked over to the ball and asked, did you lose this I said that we had. So he tossed me the ball and told me to have a nice day. Suddenly, I heard yelling coming from the house. I turned around and my mom was running down the hill, yelling at me to get away from the ice. I told her that I wasn't going out on the ice because the man and his dog had gotten the ball for me. Her response, what man turned around, and the man and dog were gone. No hole in the ice, no footprints in the light dusting of snow. He and his dog were just gone. Posted this once before but it is still unexplained. I was watching House of Cards with my boyfriend. He goes to grab a new beer and on his way back, he notices a spill on the coffee table. The table had just been cleared of dinner dishes, none of which had anything on them that could have caused a spill like this, and he and I both had our feet up. The light is on and I can tell the spill is bright red. He asks if I'm bleeding and since I had just washed dishes, knives, after dinner, I checked. She also checked. Neither of us are bleeding. I grabbed toilet paper and swabbed it to get an idea of the color and texture. There was about a tablespoon of it and no drops anywhere else. It's remarkably like blood but nothing around could have spilled besides beer and neither of us are bleeding. I looked anywhere for anything that could have spilled. The coffee table is wood and clear lacquered. There are no red fabrics at anything that could have had red dye pulled from it. Neither of us were wearing anything red. I took photos of the toilet paper that I swabbed the spill up with before and after it dried. It was bright red and then later it dried darker brown red. Any ideas? It still freaks me out to think about not having an explanation. When I was a teenager we used to live in a big house with lots of relatives. My father's great aunt who was in her 80s had the room next to me. She used to make pretty distinctive noises with her walker when she moved around. Then she turned 90 and passed away peacefully in her sleep. For at least 3 months after that I heard those noises coming from her locked vacant room. Simple auditory or even visual hallucinations of the deceased are sometimes a normal part of bereavement. A common example would be to hear the deceased calling one's name from another room. A few years ago, I was on my way to the cinema with my husband. It was evening so we left pretty early to get good seats. Where we lived to get to the cinema from our house was a 5-10 minute drive straight to an intersection with traffic lights, then a right hand turn and through 3 roundabouts then we were there. We left with 40 minutes to spare, expecting to arrive with 30 minutes to buy food tickets then queue for seats. We drove through the lights and were on the straight, having a casual conversation. I commented on a car that was driving up our butt, then suddenly we both had a really weird sensation of waking up, and we were driving down a random side road and were going really slow. We both looked at each other, said what the heck, turned around and got to the cinema right as the movie was starting. We lost about 20-25 minutes, no explanation, and got really crappy seats. 
remind me of a alien abduction story that took place in the 60s in Canada. I've had two. I was running upstairs to get to drink. The door in front of me opened. Then the door at the top of the stairs opened. I thought that was a little strange. Then I walked to the refrigerator and it opened in front of me. The second and much weirder experience happened while driving. I was driving down this curvy road at night. I was kinda zoned out and driving 55 in a 35. I curved around the corner and slammed into a deer. As I crashed into the deer, I became alert and realized that I was coming around the same corner that I just crashed. So I slammed on my brakes and turned the corner just to see a bunch of deer. It was trippy. My sister waking me up in a dream to tell me goodbye. The dream itself was really bizarre because I had sleep paralysis in the dream. In it, I could hear my sister's voice calling to me and telling me to wake up, that she'd come to say goodbye. In my dream I could move more than I could in regular paralysis, but it was like I'd had a stroke and I couldn't open my eyes. So sort of dragging half my body upright, I turned and felt around the bed and could feel somebody standing there. I put my arms around this person and gave them a hug. At this point I was now standing in my room and it was morning. I could see a beautiful morning light shining in from the curtains. I felt as though I couldn't look at my sister directly and I've always described it as though she was somehow too bright to look at, but I knew she was there. I told her we had to go see my mother, because she would want to say goodbye to her too. At that, I woke up. It was about 6am and dark out and I was scared shitless. This dream had felt so real and jarring. I have never ever dreamed of anyone saying goodbye to me like this before. I had no reason to worry about her as she had no medical conditions that I'd known of, so it wasn't like it was a dream relating to me being nervous about anything going on with her. But I was convinced if I went back to bed, I'd wake up and see her standing over me again. So when I thought my mother would be awake, I gave her a call. My mother's a stone cold atheist type and hates stuff like this and thought I was being weird but it's not like I call her up over things like this regularly. So she started making calls. And it's because of the dream we found out she'd been rushed to hospital. She thankfully survived and has no recollection of anything involving what had happened. But my mother still asks me about that dream from time to time. I've had other dreams involving a weird connection too. Very vivid dreams of staring right at someone I hadn't seen or thought about in years. A very very haunting dream of this guy and me just staring at each other. Two days later I get the letter in the post and it's him saying his mother had died recently and it had made him think of me as I'd been close to her. Stuff like that just makes me believe that maybe there is a type of connection we have as people, that something of us exists outside of us too. One time my girlfriend and I woke up from the same dream at the same time hysterically screaming. After we calmed down from what was a very emotional nocturnal experience we confirmed that we had both dreamed of confronting the same woman and having her lunge at us. I was and still am dumbstruck. That shouldn't really be possible. What makes it even more disturbing is that my GF has often spoken of a woman that haunts her house. Her mum was a nun at a mission in El Salvador and apparently dragged some bad juju back when she came to Australia. So lots of footsteps, talking and even singing at one stage. The whole shebang. So she's told me. So you wouldn't believe how fricked it was when I had sleep paralysis and there was. Yep, you guessed it. Same woman lunging at me. I was stuck to the bed surrounded by black fog and all that jazz. This happened about 2 months ago and last week GF called me after the same thing happened to her. I should note that it's apparently a benevolent spirit but it sure as frick didn't feel that way when she lunged at me. It isn't a benevolent spirit don't believe that for a second. I worked as a nanny for a family with 3 children, aged 3, 5, and 7. The children's grandparents lived on the bottom story of the house, while the kids and their parents lived on the main level, which also had a loft that doubled as a bedroom. The parents went out on a date one night. And they'd given the okay for the kids to camp out in the living room, on the main floor, after a bath, dinner, a movie and story time. The kids were fast asleep in the living room. The mother had given me a list of simple tasks to do while they slept, the last of which was to remake the bed in the loft. I went upstairs and was making the bed, and I realized I could hear a child's voice whispering to me. I assumed that one of the girls had woken up and come to find me, so I turned around to talk to her. But there was no one there. 
The words being whispered were indistinguishable, but the child's voice was getting louder. I choked out a hello and the whispering stopped. I bolted downstairs, and ran into the grandmother, who had come upstairs to take over looking after the kids after my shift finished. The really freaky thing is that when I told her what had happened, her response was, I know, I heard it, I thought it was you, so I was coming to find you. We checked the children, who were all still fast asleep, then got the grandfather to come upstairs and proceeded to check every room in the house. We found absolutely nothing, but the grandmother was convinced that she had heard something too, so they took it very seriously. I know that there's probably a logical explanation for it, but I just can't explain it. I had felt like I was being watched before, but that was when it really escalated and I started feeling unsafe. The common explanation for this is air ducts that carry sounds or voices from one place to another, children talking in their sleep or TV sounds etc. I was staying for a week or so with my girlfriend at her apartment for the first time. In the middle of the first night, she rolls over and says I forgot to tell you. I have a cat now. Her name is Cylon or something equally weird. She's black and white. She's an outside cat mostly but I'll let her in when she asks. There's food for her in the kitchen. Don't be offended if she won't let you touch her. She doesn't like men. She rambled on for a while about finding Cylon in a trash can at work. I tried to ask for more details, but she fell back asleep, or was asleep when she said all that. The next day while my girlfriend is at work, there's a meow at the door. I open it and sure enough there's a black and white cat there. Seems to answer to Cylon as much as any cat answers to anything. I find some cans of food in the kitchen cabinet and feed her one in the dish on the floor. In spite of the warnings, she takes to me and we sit on the couch together and watch TV for a few hours. She eventually goes to the door and scratches, so I'll let her out. This repeats for a few days before I get around to mentioning to my girlfriend that I've been feeding Cylon and we're getting along fine. She was very confused. She denied finding a cat at work, having one presently, or having any cat food. I check the cabinet and there is no cat food there, no empty tins in the trash, and no dish on the floor. I never saw the cat again. Had a dream a dead man, corpse-like, was in my attic. He asked where my granddad was and I told him. It was so casual. My granddad in real life, he had dementia. That night when I was dreaming, was going wild to go to the attic because his dead brother was there. But my dad told me when I woke up and I didn't have any words. I get a really strong feeling of deja vu on a fairly common basis. Always when I'm doing some mundane thing, something triggers it and it stops me in my tracks. Also I think I dream these moments beforehand. Also not to worry you unnecessarily, but it would be a really good idea to make an appointment to see your doctor and a neurologist. I had the same thing start happening to me about a decade ago and it turned out I have temporal lobe epilepsy. It was Christmas morning, and I was like 10 years old. I went and woke up my grandparents at about 6.30 in the morning. I distinctly remember seeing a little girl crawl out of the bottom of the bed they were sleeping in and stand in front of me. In the dim light, she looked similar to my cousin. Small, dark hair. I asked why she was in their bed and they said she wasn't. She then vanished in front of me. Weird. Anything crawling out from under beds or coming from closets is the most horrifying thing I can imagine. One time I was home alone watching TV. The way my couch was positioned, it could get a glimpse through the doorway of my kitchen wall. While watching, I suddenly see a pen fly and hit against the wall. I decide to go check it out and there was indeed a pen on the floor. No idea how that happened. I was staring at a metal table when it suddenly got a big scratch across it. The scratch wasn't there before, and nothing in the room touched it. It just appeared right before my eyes. No big deal. Someone just time traveled and damaged it in the past. I was sleeping one night and I randomly woke up to see a young girl dressed in white with her hair covering her face. She was standing on the other side of my room looking down. This scared me so much I hid under my blanket and sat there in dead silence for 15 minutes trying not to move. Once I gathered the courage to look out of my sheet I peeked out and there was no one there. I immediately turned the light on. I was drenched with sweat and stayed up for the rest of the night because I couldn't sleep. This was 2 years ago and I still sleep with the door slightly open to let a bit of light in. I have no idea what who it was. 
I got this, I think. 40 or so years ago my grandfather was in a VA home with an advanced case of Alzheimer's. He didn't recognize any of us. In the meantime my grandmother, who was a tough old farm girl learned she had a rather advanced case of ovarian cancer and died less than a month later. About an hour after my grandmother died the VA hospital 100 miles away called and said my normally stoic grandfather was hysterical, screaming, crying and calling out for my grandmother, whom he hadn't recognized for a couple of years. Nobody had told him she died and he wouldn't have understood if they had. He passed away himself two weeks later. That bond was still there. Desperately sad but beautiful that despite his Alzheimer's he still loved her. I forgot I also had an experience where I woke up at 5am, decided I was going out to get coffee, it's still dark out, but the Starbucks is just down the street, I get dressed, go downstairs, grab my keys out of the door, and get in my car, I accidentally dropped my keys on the floor of the car, so I reached down to grab them, I put the keys in the ignition, start the car up, and drive to Starbucks, when I pull up in the parking lot. I notice it's unusually vacant, plus the lights are off at the Starbucks, I check the clock in the car, and notice it was midnight, I drove home, entirely befuddled, basically just realizing I had somehow skipped through time, I pull the car back into the garage, and close the garage door, I walk back into my house, and the sun is shining through the windows, I check my watch, and it's still the same day only I've now gone back in time, only now it's 9.30am. The rest of the week was fairly normal after that. At the risk of sounding like yet another wingnut who saw the UFO, M.T. Shasta, summer of 2010, was visiting a friend who lives in the open plains northwest of the mountain, not far from I-5, and we were still outside, enjoying a long conversation that had continued after the sun had set. It was dark, and we hadn't made a fire. Suddenly, I see what looks like an in-blue colored and distinctly bird-shaped light swoop down and fly in a straight level line. It had the proportions of a swift, with the split tail even. I'd guess Cessna sized and under 1000 feet. Estimating its size and altitude was difficult. However, as the craft produced absolutely no sound whatsoever, it seemed graceful and serene. Then very, very abruptly it changed course by about 60 degrees, without banking at all like an aircraft would. It flew on that course for another second, then completely vanished. We were facing each other, so unfortunately he did not see what I saw, as it was behind him. I am a nut job. Lock me up. I was alone in the house watching TV which was placed in front of some blinds. These blinds were covering a large rectangular window and the TV was a large one that stands. Anyways, I was alone in the house when I noticed that the center of the blinds had parted, as if someone were opening them to look outside. I thought this was strange and it bugs me when the blinds are open at night. I'm a pretty private person, so I go to examine the blinds and there is nothing holding them open. The hair on the back of my neck stood up and I jumped back a bit. After gaining a bit of composure I checked to see if there was an air current flowing past them and felt nothing. The AC was not on nor any fans. So I slowly approached the blinds to take a closer look and they slowly close. Like if you're peeking outside at someone but don't want them to notice you were looking through the blinds. It was weird, but that house was strange period. I have a lot of these. Here's one of the shorter stories. As a child I used to live in an old Victorian house with dilapidated walls and large oak doors without handles. You had to open them by reaching under the door and pulling. They were irregularly cut and very heavy. It was a generally menacing house and quite a few unexpected things happened there. One particularly bright and sunny day I was home alone sitting on the couch drawing in a notebook. Suddenly, I tense up and get a very disturbing feeling, but nothing seems to have caused it. The day was bright and sunny and peaceful. One second later, while I'm still trying to figure out why I'm suddenly on edge, the answering machine kicks on and begins to record without the phone ringing. A demonic voice starts to speak from the answering machine. All rocks and spit and bile. The words made no sense and weren't English or any language I've ever heard. It sounded a bit like Pentecostal tongues. I jumped up, walked outside and stood in the front yard. While I'm standing there on this beautiful day, terrified and confused, my leg starts to tickle. I look down and see that my leg is bleeding quite a bit. I wipe the blood away but there is no cut. 
I'm not bleeding or injured. There is just blood on my leg and now my hand. I stayed in the front yard until my mom got home an hour later. That house really sucked. This is the fourth story on Reddit I see about untraceable blood in a week. Crazy. Roommate and I felt incredibly tired for no reason during the middle of the afternoon while watching TV in the living room. We both nod off within minutes. We both wake up at the same time, in the same spot, wearing different clothes. A day later, as in 24 hours had passed, people have suggested it was a gas leak but there are no gas lines. We hadn't had any alcohol, and we don't do drugs. It was the most uncomfortable experience in my entire life. Your roommate totally roofied you and then pretended to wake up when you did. I was smoking a cigarette outside one night, walk over to my fence to pee, and suddenly there was this huge bright white light behind me. When I turned to look at it, I just saw a bright white orb in the air. The light went away like a second after I looked at it. There were no light poles anywhere near it, and I didn't hear a thing. I've been waiting to tell this for a long time. When I was 10 or 11 I was alone at home. I was walking down the stairs and I got a strange feeling like somebody is coming behind me. I stopped and was just listening if someone was in the house without me knowing. Suddenly I feel like someone grabbed me and threw me down the stairs. I swear to god I didn't just fall or I jumped. I felt like I've been grabbed and picked up and thrown down the stairs. I fricked up my ankle really badly but my heart was pumping so hard that I got up and sprinted outside. A lot of strange crap happened in that house. I don't believe in the supernatural but I truly cannot explain what happened that day. I was rising a bus from Stockholm to Gothenburg, which takes about 6 hours. At the first stop an adorable old woman gets on the bus, maybe 65-70 years old, and sits next to me. I'm not really the social type when traveling and had a book I was reading but I could tell she was the type that enjoys talking to strangers on buses. She brought up a knitting kit from her person was working on a scarf and occasionally looked over at me with a warm smile to see if I were willing to communicate. After a while we started talking and she seemed like a normal, lovely senior citizen, telling me about her adult kids and her grandkids, that sort of stuff. We talked some, got back to our activities, me reading and her knitting, and after a while got back to talking. This went on for about 3 hours before we arrived in Junkaping, which was her destination. We say our goodbyes and I put on my headphones to relax my ears with some music. Although the conversation was nice it was a bit too much human interaction for me at that moment. I had been visiting family and had an intensive week of seeing relatives behind me. After a while I noticed the bus hadn't left the station yet, and it must have been 15-20 minutes since we arrived. Nothing weird about that. They usually change bus drivers at this station and that often causes delays. But as I'm taking my headphones off the bus starts departing and outside the bus window I see the old woman being held by the arms by two big security guards. She's crying and the security officer doesn't seem to care at all. I get up and ask the driver if he knows what's going on but he just got on his shift and just got on the bus himself. It's been 7 years and it still boggles me why she was apparently being arrested. The sweetest old lady I've ever met. You know, it doesn't have to mean she did anything wrong. She could have had dementia or something and be registered as a missing person. Her family looking for her. Maybe it wasn't the first time that she ran away from home like that. In the middle of rural Ontario with almost no artificial lights, I saw what appeared to be a star hurtling across the night sky come to a dead stop and then change directions. My friend Ben saw it too. Alien forgot something at home. Not creepy, not scary, just unexplained. But being a 12 hour old thread no one is going to read this anyways. In high school I was on a field trip in Daytona, Florida, waiting for the Dunkin Donuts outside of the ocean center to open with a friend at about quarter to five. A homeless man, or homeless looking, was walking down the street and made eye contact with me, without slowing down. He just casually asked you know Santa Claus's dog's name, what's Santa's dog's name and kept walking. At 14, I had little experience with what I now recognize clearly as sea kid behavior. I just stared as he strutted away, never looking back. A teacher who was with us asked, in conversational tone, what the frick was that? From well over 100 yards away, sea kid replied I said, what's Santa Claus dog's name? 
You gotta know the dog's name. My teacher turned to us and chuckled. Ajian at a normal volume. Skipper. All we hear is thanks. This happened nearly a decade ago. And it left me with so many unanswered questions. Was he really homeless and or on drugs? Or just naturally crazy? Why did he want to know Santa Claus's dog's name? Why did he think he needs to know that? Why was my teacher so chill about possible sea kids asking 14 stroke 15 age boys about the non-canonically recognized extended family of a holiday mascot? Most importantly, how the frick did he hear us? We only heard him because he was screaming. How the frick did he pin down what we were talking? As the sister of a crackhead, I can tell you that if you just roll with whatever craziness is spewing out of their mouths, they'll stay pretty chill and non-threatening. Your teacher may have known that. I was playing a hide and seek type game in my friend Danny's yard once with a bunch of guys junior high. I was it, so I was looking with a flashlight for everyone else, and I saw a kid running into some bushes by the front yard. I remember immediately thinking it was weird because he was wearing a bright red shirt and jeans, and my friends and I always wore all black when we played that night, even covered our faces and everything. I ran over to the bushes to see who was messing with me by changing their clothes, or to see if it was a neighbor kid or something, and Danny came running from behind the house at the same time. At this point, the kid in red is in full view for Danny but hidden behind the bush for me, and Danny slows to like a walk. I point the light at Danny, and the kid in red darts away toward the front yard. I remember catching just a brief flash of his clothes again, and then nothing. I lost sight of him in the dark for just a second then he was totally gone. And it's a big, open front yard, there wasn't exactly anywhere the kid could have gone. Danny starts crying, and we call an end to the round. Danny claims it was his brother, who had died two years before when the barn behind his house burned down. That, coupled with the fact that he, from both my perspective and Danny's, really seemed to just effing vanish, has convinced me that there's crap out there we don't yet know how to explain. Danny actually ended up pretty happy about the experience. He feels like his brother Nate was hanging around the house and just wanted to play with his bro. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.